Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Bot Camp, where today we're talking about the perfect landing. As Aristotle once said, a perfect landing is the gateway to a perfect soul. Or he would have said that if he had played Fortnite, because the landing is probably the most important part of any Fortnite game, besides maybe the end game. We all know how frustrating it is to be headed right for that gun spawn on the drop, only to have another player swoop in last second, take the gun, and send us back to the lobby. One of the easiest ways to increase your KD and win more games is simply with better landings, and that's what we're looking at today. If you like the video, please make YouTube and me happy and click the like and subscribe buttons below. First, we'll have a quick geometry lesson to learn what the perfect drop line looks like. Then we'll break down the landing into a few simple steps that we'll talk about in a little bit more detail throughout the video. So let's figure out how to get to our drop location the fastest so we land before any other player. We've all played those games where we see that player gliding way in front of us and can't figure out how they got so far ahead. Well, it's actually pretty simple, really. Every game we have two pieces of known information, the target drop and our bus line. In this situation, many people might be jumping from the bus here, or here. But come on, people. We all know the Archimedes principle that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, which means we should be jumping here. You know when we work both Aristotle and Archimedes into a Fortnite video that we're learning things. The easiest way to do this in-game is to mark the location you want to land at and simply turn your camera perpendicular so it's looking directly out the side of the bus. Wait until your mark is in the center of your screen and voila, jump from there. All things being equal, if you use this path, you will arrive before anyone else. Of course, we all know that all things are not equal when it comes to landing in Fortnite. Elevation plays a huge role in determining where you can pull your glider and therefore where your feet touch the ground. So the goal here is to cover the most distance in the shortest amount of time. In Fortnite, while your character is diving, you travel much quicker than if you're gliding. This means we need to stay in the diving animation as long as possible. To cover the most ground the fastest, as you jump from the bus, aim your crosshairs at or near the horizon and slowly pull upwards until you enter a freefall. You'll know when you reach this point because you'll no longer hear the wind effects and you'll stop moving horizontally. Right as you enter freefall, simply tilt your crosshairs back down until you're diving again, and you'll now cover the maximum amount of distance possible on your jump. This technique is especially useful for drops extremely far from the bus line, and ensures that you'll be the first player with boots on the ground. Again, the shortest distance between two points applies here as well, which means we don't necessarily need to use this technique if we are dropping somewhere that's near the bus line. In this case, just get to the deploy point as fast as possible. Of course, this means we need to know how elevation plays into our drop. If your straight line goes right through a giant hill, your drop will be all kinds of screwed up. In this case, draw a new line closest to your original line that avoids the hill. However, for this, we need to know exactly where to deploy our glider, and this is where landmarks come into play. A landmark is something you should use on the map to figure out where your optimum deploy point is. For example, I know that to land on top of the large apartment building in Moisty Palms, I should deploy my glider right at the bend in this road here coming from the west, or right before this hill here by the bridge coming from the north. Identifying landmarks is essential because it lets you get perfect drops every time. This is why I suggest you choose one location to master and learn landmarks from every direction coming into that location. In addition, choose a single building so we don't just drop willy-nilly and hope for the best. The more times you drop at a single spot, the easier it is to identify landmarks. Once you have your spot, building, and landmarks picked out, apply the shortest distance between two points principle and you'll never get beat on a drop again. The last and final thing to mention is limiting loot RNG. Make sure you have a loot path picked out to a weapon as quick as possible and don't rely on a single floor spawn or chest spawn upon landing. This is a tip I picked up from one of my favorite YouTubers and streamers, the Roadie Bros, in his location drop guides. There's nothing worse than hacking through a roof only to find bandages and ammo, while the guy who ran through the front door grabs a green pump on the welcome mat. This is why it's even more important to pick an exact building in your landing spot. You need to burn through as many loot drops as you can quickly to find a weapon and shields. For example, I know that if there's no weapon or chest on top of the building in Moisty, there's another chest spawn at the top of the elevator shaft. If I don't hear this chest right away, I can hack through the roof into the top floor bathroom for another potential weapon spawn. 
Ultimately, getting the perfect landing takes repetition and practice, but by applying these tips, your drops will be drastically improved. Please let me know what you think of the video in the comments section below, and let me know what landmarks you use for your favorite drop points. As always, thanks for dropping by.